hello everyone uh, welcome to this video lecture on uh, non destructive testing so in the previous class we are discussing about uh, magnetic particle uh, inspection and uh, its uh, different concepts uh, now we'll be moving on uh, to the next topic so in the previous video lecture as mentioned before we've gone through magnetic particle uh, inspection the principles the different terms associated with magnetism and uh, the procedure associated now we'll be moving on to the types of magnetization techniques and as well as the methods of magnetization that are being currently employed now the methods of uh, magnetization we'll be moving on to the methods of magnetization the basic principle of magnetization as we have all discussed is to produce magnetic lines of force uh, that is across the expected direction of the crack so that there will be a flux leakage that will occur and due to the flux leakage when you apply the magnetic particles they will form a lump and this can be viewed under uh, your visible light or fluorescent light now if the crack direction is uh, if the likely crack direction is unknown then the test must be performed in two directions that is at right angles that we have also discussed we are will be providing the magnetic field in one particular direction and then 90 degree will be again uh, reversing the direction of the field and also will be um, the varying the direction at which the magnet is being placed the basic methods of magnetization are first one is magnetic flow that is to make the component of uh, a magnetic circuit to make it a component of a magnetic circuit effectively by using it as a bridge uh, of a permanent uh, or electromagnet then second one is current flow in current flow uh, we pass an electric current through the specimen broadly along the direction uh, along its direction and throughout the region where the cracks are we are expecting so the second method is passing a current through the specimen third one is the induced current flow and fourth one is the electromagnetic induction that is to pass an electric current through a conductor that is uh, put inside a hollow specimen adjacent or wrapped around it now there are a variety of methods that can be used to establish a magnetic field in a component that is we can uh, establish magnetic field in a component by two different methods first one is uh, direct magnetization and second one is indirect magnetization okay so uh, the method is direct method of magnetization in direct method of magnetization current is directly passed through the component the flow of current along a particular direction will cause a circular magnetic field to form in and around the conductor along the, in and around the conductor now when uh, using this direct magnetization method we must take care that uh, good proper electrical contact is established and maintained between the test equipment and the component uh, that is to be tested this is to avoid uh, overheating at high resistance points or due to arcing they can cause uh, issues uh, within the specimen so this must be taken care of when you are applying a direct magnetization method that is when you are directly applying a current now the magnetic field formed uh, during this method is at right angles to the direction of uh, electric current flow that we'll discuss in subsequent slides now there are uh, several ways that uh, direct magnetization can be achieved first one is clamping the component between two electrical contacts in a special uh, piece of equipment second one is using clamps or prods first one this is the first method clamping the component between two electrical contacts in a uh, in a special piece of equipment as you can see here these are the two clamps and the current is allowed to flow in that particular direction so due to the current flow along the length of the conductor by our right hand thumb rule magnetic field is uh, developed across uh, the specimen so then powder can be added and we can find uh, where there are cracks uh, present so this is actually the actual representation where you are uh, clamping it uh, between electrical contacts and a specialized equipment now current is passed through this we discussed in the figure current is passed through the component and a circular magnetic field is established in and around the component when the magnetizing current is stopped a residual magnetic field will be remaining inside the component due to its retentivity uh, the strength of the induced magnetic field within the component is actually proportional to the amount of current that is passing through now second method is using clamps or prods these clamps or prods they are attached or placed in contact with the component electrical uh, current flows through the component uh, from contact to contact this sets up a circular magnetic field around the path of the uh, current now this is using clamps or prods as you can see these are the two clamps which are connected uh, to either an ac source or a dc source current is passed through and as a result magnetic field is developed and we can attain cracks this the field will be removed due to the residual magnetism we can find the presence of cracks these are the prods that are being used current is passed through either ac current or dc current can be used for this method this is the uh, method of producing direct magnetization using clamps or prods
Now we go on to indirect magnetization method. In indirect magnetization method, it is accomplished by using a strong external magnetic field, right? That is, you are applying an external magnetic field without directly magnetizing the material. We are applying a strong external magnetic field to establish a, a magnetic field within the component. As with direct magnetization, there are several indirect methods that can be accomplished. First one is the use of permanent magnets. Second one, we can use uh, electromagnets. Third one, we can use central conductor magnetization. Fourth one is using coils and solenoids. Now, this is uh, the use of permanent magnets. We can apply permanent magnets uh, directly uh, onto the surface. This in turn, this due to the external magnetic field created, the uh, component or specimen that we are going to test will also undergo uh, magnetization. Then the may, then it is removed, residual magnetism remains and then we can test. Now, this method of using permanent magnets is actually a low cost method. However, their use is limited uh, due to the lack of controlling the field. It is not possible for us to control the amount of field that we need to apply uh, so that the residual magnetism amount should remain in the material and also the difficulty of placing permanent magnets from the component. So the placing difficulty is there and the uh, inability to control the field strength is also a main disadvantage. Now, so uh, in turn, we can try to use uh, industrial magnets, but still they are not po uh, popular in use. That is because they produce very high strength, uh, they have very high magnetic field. So uh, due to this, it is not possible to remove them easily. That is, we need to apply about 250 Newton of force to remove them. And it is very difficult. And sometimes they are dangerous to handle. So we don't go for industrial magnets. However, uh, permanent magnets, they find use actually uh, for underwater uh, inspections. Uh, such as our explosive environments where electromagnets cannot be used. Now, permanent magnets can also be sm uh, made small enough to fit into tight areas where electromagnets might not fit. So, permanent magnets can also be made, but the main disadvantage is the inability to control the strength of the magnetic field. Now, we go for the next one that is the use of uh, yokes or electromagnets. Electromagnets are actually uh, in the form of an adjustable horseshoe magnet. This horseshoe magnet is called yoke, it is as shown in the figure. Now, they eliminate the problem that is associated with permanent magnets and they are extensively used in the industry, even in magnetic uh, particle testing. Now, the electromagnets, uh, the advantage is we can switch on and switch off the field by passing current through it. So, electromagnet will exhibit a magnetic flux when a current is flow, uh, made to pass through a soft iron core. So, this is the soft iron core that is shown in the figure. Current is allowed to pass through. When current is allowed to pass through, the iron core magnetic field is generated on the surface uh, where we can find the indication for cracks. Now, when the magnet is placed on the component, uh, that is the external magnetic field is imposed onto the specimen and uh, as a result, the uh, specimen is also magnetized. And an electromagnetic yoke is a very common piece of equipment that is used to establish a magnetic field. A switch is also included so that we can switch on and switch off the current at regular intervals. Now, as mentioned, they can be powered with an AC circuit or a DC circuit. DC current or DC current can be used. This type of magnet generates a very strong magnetic field in, even in a local area where the poles of the magnet touch uh, the part being inspected. That is, the main advantage of electromagnet is due to the use of current, we can actually control uh, the strength of the magnetic field, which is not possible in the case of permanent magnets. This is the advantage of a electromagnetic material. The third one is the uh, central conductor magnet. This is another way of indirectly inducing a magnetic field in a material that is uh, by using a current carrying conductor uh, that is placed inside uh, the specimen or it passes through the specimen uh, which is to be uh, inspected. So a circular magnetic field can be established in a cylindrical component by using a central conductor. One or two central conductors, they are hung from a solid copper bar running through the inside diameter. That is, if you have a hollow specimen to be tested, these current carrying conductors are placed inside and then current is passed through them. As a result, the entire specimen will get magnetized. The current is passed through the copper bar and the resulting uh, circular magnetic field establishes a magnetic field within the test component. This is actually the figure as you can see here, consists of a central conductor. That central conductor is passing through a gear. Uh, um, through the uh, opening in the gear it is passing through so this current central conductor is actually a current is passed through them so this central conductor generates a magnetic field is this, this in turn magnetizes the gear arrangement now last one is the use of coils and solenoids now this the use of coils and solenoids becomes relevant when the length of the com component is very large that is the length of the component is several times larger than its diameter a longitudinal magnetic field we need to apply a longitudinal magnetic field it is along the length we need to apply a longitudinal magnetic field 
So uh, the component is placed longitudinally. That is that is shown here. The component is placed longitudinally in the concentrated magnetic line uh, that fills the center of the coil or a solenoid. This type of magnetization techniques also called as coil shot. That this is actually the method. This is the coil. The magnetic field is generated by the coil. And if you have a component who has a which has a very large length, then it is placed inside the coil. Uh, this coil uh, the current is passed through the coil. As a result, the field is generated. That magnetic field is externally imposed over the specimen. Now, the difference between longitudinal and circular magnetic field, we have to discuss it. Longitudinal magnetic fields are generated by uh, permanent magnets, uh, electromagnetic yokes and using a coil or coil shot method as discussed. Uh, circular magnetic field consists of clamping the component between two electrical contacts that is called head shot method. Uh, that is the first one that we discussed. Uh, that is clamping an electric, uh, the cam clamping the specimen actually uh, between two electrical contacts. That is known as head shot technique. Uh, it's irregularly asked in your university exam. The difference between head shot technique and coil shot technique. So head shot technique involves fixing a component that is to be tested or clamping the component between two electrical contacts, which was discussed in the previous uh, slides. That method is called headshot method. So you can use clamps or prods also, and a central conductor magnetization is also there. Though these three methods comes under hot shot technique, and in coil shot technique, it is used by permanent magnets. Electromagnetic uh, yokes are using a coil where longitudinal magnetic fields are generated. Here, circular magnetic fields are generated. Now we come to the end of this lecture. Uh, in the next lecture, we'll be going on to the uh, indications that are uh, produced uh, due to magnetic particle uh, uh, testing. And also, we'll be going through the different current sources that we can use uh, in this method. Thank you.